Hello everybody, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. So I am back with the last and final part of the flip through of this very chunky <laughs> Creatures of the Night journal that I made for April or Pink Oddbird for our, our personal swap that we did. And uh, before I get started, I would just like to thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I know that these have been some really long videos and I've done a lot of blabbing, <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and taking the time to check out my work. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please do not ever hesitate to leave them down below. And I will try to answer you and uh, as quickly as possible. So, without further ado, let us commence. So, in part two, we stopped with uh, signature three. And so, we're going to begin with signature four. And try to do a good job staying in frame. Okay, so, uh, plain on the front. And here is the character for the character page for this signature. Um, let me see. Maybe I can make this a bit better of a view. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a little better. So I've got just a little glassine bag here, and this is Dorian Gray from the Penny Dreadful series. And I've just left the back of the card plain, but I've added an eyelet and some trim so that she can pull him out of here. And just like the others, there is uh, layers of cheesecloth and lace. There's a little bulb pin here. And this one has the definition for immortal because Dorian Gray is an immortal being. His character is based off of a novel by Oscar Wilde called The Picture of Dorian Gray, which was first published in July 1890. And that story was kind of a really big deal in the British press because um, everyone said that in writing this story, Oscar Wilde uh, was morally offensive. So if you guys um, have never read the story or heard of it, check that out. I will try to, uh, I'll leave you some information in the description box down below so you can if you are interested. So, uh, basically Dorian Gray gained his immortality by having his soul trapped inside of a painting. And he also, in the show, he is somewhat of, well, his abilities and his demeanor, it's somewhat uh, reminiscent of a succubus, I guess. Um, but anyway, he has a, a wonderfully unnerving beauty. He has sort of a thing for Vanessa. And uh, he is drawn to her because of the fact that they both have uh, supernatural ties. So, interesting character. So that's his page, and then we have a shorter page here with a lyric from Prince, another of my favorite purple dyed papers. I love the markings on here. Sorry, it's getting a little bit difficult to open this fluffy thing. Oops, got something stuck here. Okay, the next, um, the other side of that page, I've just done a little bit of collaging with some bats and the word wicked. Here's some scrapbook paper that I wanted to leave so that she could write on it with a gel pen. I'm going to, I'm going to move this Shakespeare book. There we go. Okay. And on the other side of that page is, let me see if I can do this. So I've got a paper clip hoping to hold it closed, and it's just got some little lace scraps and another earring that I've repurposed. So these are some California redwoods, which are some absolutely amazing trees, some of the largest trees on earth, and 
April lives in California, so I wanted to add a little bit of that, and so it flips open, and she has all of this space to write, and so I've added a little pocket on the back, another vellum pocket with the silver leaf trim, and here is some information about the redwoods, but inside of the pocket, I've added a photo of a very, very young prince, very handsome, and it says an eccentric but very estimable gentleman. Very true. Here we have a sheet of coffee dyed music paper. It's just got some lace along the edge. On the opposite side, there is a fabric little tuck with a tag that says twilight. And tucked inside is the other half of the... Uh, the tag that I use for the title card, and I've just added on a little pink feather for Pink Oddbird, a little black feather, piece of trim, and a quote from Prince that says, yeah, everything is beautiful. So that just tucks in there. Add this uh, paper clip back here. Some black paper lined with some of that neat fabric. Some coffee dye paper with lace. This is a Shakespeare page. There's a little tab here with that vintage lace that I dyed. And on the opposite page is a larger vellum pocket with the leaf trim. And tucked inside is just a little tag that I made. More of that layering plain on the back so that she can write. And I made a pocket out of some trim stamp some roses here like a little garden of roses is peeking up from the back and this is another altered plain card just added some lime paper on the back but I've got the definition for beauty and just a few little elements collaged onto there so that just tucks in here got a little small page here with a tuck and this is a small glassine envelope and I've decoupaged a piece of some napkins that I got from Mrs. Yvonne Carter. Thank you so much, Yvonne. These were absolutely perfect for this journal. So I've also embossed the word wicked and tucked inside of this envelope is just one of the little itty bitty books that I made with some definitions for beauty is uh, beautiful, beautify, and it's just full of little itty bitty pieces of scraps. So just tuck that in here, some coffee dyed paper with stitching detail, a purple doily, some coffee dyed tracing paper, uh, here's some more coffee dyed lined paper and I've got clipped on here with this really cute bat paper clip that I got from Dolly in my Halloween Happy Mail. Thank you so much Dolly, I love these little guys. Here is the other of the little pocket envelope tags. I'm not really sure what to call them, but I've added that black rose vellum on this one and tucked inside is just a little card with some scrap paper and a quote from Prince that says the gatekeepers must change. So that just tucks in there. And I've had it paper clipped like so, and the, the other side of this page, let, okay, now I'm going to have to prop it up, I'm so sorry you guys, I'll get it straight in a minute, I'll get it straight, I promise, so on this side is a little flip here, and this is also a tuck spot for her to tuck something in there, and a tag that says mythical, here's another sheet of the National Geographic from the 30s, and it's just an ad for visiting New Orleans, and on the opposite side, I've made a little pocket where I've layered sewing pattern paper onto a book page. And then I just sewed it to the page. And here is another little journaling card that I made with the, uh, the baby doll book. Her creepy little baby doll hands. <laughs> There's some more purple dyed paper. There's some washi and stitching. This is a sheet from... A, uh, one of their record player sleeves and it talks about like the history of top and such 
So I thought that was pretty neat. Tops, excuse me. And then in the center is another of these vellum little fold outs. So this side folds out and I've layered some tracing paper along the back side so she can write here. There is a vellum pocket with some of that um, fabric that I've dyed and these are some of the creatures from Beetlejuice. Really crazy, creepy, awesome looking guys. And then on this side, I've layered more tracing paper and sewing pattern paper so she can write here. And she can also write on the back. Purple paper with some washi. Here is the other side of that uh, New Orleans ad. And I've just made a little, um, I don't know if this would be uh, called a concertina or not but it's just a little fold out page if I can get it untied sorry guys so I've added an eyelet to the front of it so that she can add the strings in and tie it back but inside I've lined it with some of the purple dyed paper made a little tuck spot here with an altered Tim Holtz ticket and on the opposite side I have uh, I cut out like um let me show you so my husband brought me home this uh, this envelope that he found at work. It's from a pawn shop, I guess. So, of course, what did I do? I opened it up and used it as a template. And so I used this envelope as a template with some acetate and uh, made a little acetate envelope. And it is open, but I thought it looked neat with the little spiders in here. And these are spiders also from Mrs. Dolly. Thank you so much, Dolly. But I thought they were really cute. And I just tucked in a little stamped piece of vellum for her to keep and use as she likes. And then there's also space behind this where she can tuck something inside. Here's some coffee dyed line paper and I've paper clipped one of the, uh, the hand sewn tags that I made. It's just got some seam binding and ribbon tied to the top and I did not cover the back, but this is the large one that I made, so it's like a field, a lavender field with little itty bitty flowers at the bottom. There's a fabric tag here, a uh, tab, excuse me, a uh, paper clip with one of those really pretty hematite roses, tracing paper and doily, it's coffee dyed paper with a layered lace pocket, and this is just like a large coin envelope that I made for her to use. Uh, it does have something inside. Oh, it's pieces of um, definitions that I had cut out that I didn't use, but I thought maybe she could use those for something. Sorry if you hear my cat. He is trying to get into the cabinet. One second. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yeah, my, uh, <laughs> he knows he is not allowed into the cabinets, but he tried to sneak in there anyway, and I called him. Ha ha. Bad kitty. So here's the other side of that little flip, and I've sewn to this no one second. My goodness. Okay. I promise I'm not going to be fussing at my cat the whole time. I am so sorry, you guys. So I've made an envelope out of tea bag, and I've layered some lace onto it, and it's got a magnetic closure, and this is like a little piece of... Uh, decoupage napkin on book page and there is a little tuck spot behind and in in that tuck spot I've added this tag that I made it's an upcycled tag um, inspired by my friend Kim who makes the most amazing tags and I've just embossed this graphic 45 stamp added a little bow at the top and I can't remember I think yeah the envelope is empty on the inside. Here is Shakespeare page and paper clip to that. I've got the other little, I really have no idea what I'm going to call these, but so it's like an envelope. And this piece of music is called, Oh, You Beautiful Doll, in reference to um, the dolls. And this is just another one where I've layered some different pieces of fabric to create some, I guess they're like little tulips or rosebuds, and I've hand stitched around each one. 
and then added some stems with the sewing machine and I've also added on these uh, black velvet little leaves that I cut out from one of these skirts and here's the back so she can definitely write on this and I just have paper clipped that to this page so that she can still read the uh, Shakespeare and coffee dyed page with some washi and some lace from Mrs. Carey, some black paper with a fabric tab and a tag that says spell cast. It's the other side of that music paper with some vintage lace on it. Here is a side tuck that I've created using a uh, one of these vintage relationship cards that I found at thrift store and so I just uh, punched the edges and inked it up and I've sewn it to the page and then I, on the bottom here I've sewn one of these leaves and tucked inside is another scroll and there's just a journaling card here and printout of the undertaker and his pals it's a playbill for that movie Got a, another fabric tab here with a little skull and crossbones, and on the other side I've added an owl brad and some just some pieces of uh, textiles layered here. This is the last page of the signature, and I've got another of the Kim envelopes. So of course there is a tuck here, and this piece of music caught a foggy day. There is a magnetic closure, and it is empty on the inside, but she can add something in there and here we have another penny dreadful circular and this is just a little piece of ephemera that I cut out from some Tim Holtz paper I think it's the memoranda and so I just thought it would be a neat little thing to write on so I've torn the edges and distressed it up last signature you guys so here's the front and Inside the first page, I've got a large lace pocket. This is some of that beautiful black lace that Kim sent to me. And I've got this really neat flower here that I got from Priscilla. I told you it was absolutely perfect for this journal. So pretty. And underneath, I've sort of um, paper clipped. I'm sorry, I've a uh, safety. There's a safety pin here. And I've got on this a vintage like a dry cleaning tag or something and this seven gypsies piece of ephemera and so in the pocket I've added another doll journaling card with that really neat lace coffee dyed paper and then I've also included a page of her birth date this is from like an herbal an herbal birthday book I have and so each person's birthday has an uh, a particular type of herb that's assigned to that date and it just talks about it in some history so I thought that was something neat to add another Shakespeare page with a vintage lace tab a little partial page here with a Prince lyric and this is the I'm sorry I'm out of frame aren't I so this is the character page for the final signature uh, this character's name is Brona Croft, and she is she is the woman who eventually became the bride for uh, Frankenstein's creature. And so I've got lace layered, a pin with some um, some little scraps on it, and the definition for consumption because she died of consumption. So. Uh, in life, her name was Brona Croft, and she is she was an Irish immigrant who survived working as a, what's the nicest way I can put this? Uh, let's just say like an escort. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, that's how she, um, she earned her wages in, uh, and survived, and... Uh, she had a troubled life to begin with, but anyway, she ended up uh, 
with consumption or tuberculosis and she died from it and she was reborn by Victor Frankenstein as Lily Frankenstein and he created her under pressure from the creature or John Clare to make her he wanted a love he wanted someone to be with and so under the guise of that um, he created Lily Frankenstein, but in reality, Victor was very, very much in love with her. So, anyway, more spoilers. <laughs> so, on the opposite side, we've got a flip, and I made this from a Halloween card, but I really thought that the colors matched well, and it's got this um, really cool image of some trees at night, and a huge full moon, and it's got glitter all over it. You can't really tell, but... There is a large pocket, a little secret tuck spot behind it, and I've just added some paper uh, little banners here with a, sti a sticker from Tim Holtz that says Witching Hour, and I've just layered some uh, fabric piece, a button, and I really like this button here. I don't know if you can tell, but let's see if I can get it, but it's got this white edge on it that looks like a crescent moon. It's really hard to see, sorry. Um, Another button here. I've got some seam binding with some hand stitching. And anyway, the card says, Wishing you an evening sky touched with, it, with an air of mystery, a bright full moon to guide you. And so, when you flip it open, see, isn't the color really cool? I have added a, like a little secret, well, it's a writing spot, and I've sewn it to the page, but I've made it into a secret little tuck spot on the inside, and in there I've added this really cool um, star chart, and it does glow in the dark, which is really cool, but I thought that it was neat because it went with uh, the card and the book, Creatures of the Night. So April can set this out during the day, let it soak up the sun, and then she can check it out at night, and... Um, this is the star chart for uh, towards the north in March is what it says. So I thought that was a neat little addition. And it came from this little miniature book that I found at some point, And it's all about celestial bodies and the history of the study of stars and astrology and things like that. It's really neat. So on this black cardstock page, we've got some trim. And I've made another little lace pocket sorry I know it's hard to see and I've also sewn on the side here so it can this can be used as like a little tuck spot as well but this is just a piece of applique that I've cut out from one of those skirts and tucked inside is of course vintage black and white bride of Frankenstein and I've also added in another of the pages from that really amazing pocket ledger book for her to use and got some coffee dyed paper here with some vintage trim sewn on here is a page from that doll book and just got a paper clip with a little feather charm and some beads and just this little it's like a little advertisement for a horror film it says terrorized so I've just paper clipped that here. Well, I'll show you in a minute. And on the opposite side, I've made another of the um, coffee filter envelopes. And there is a place to put something behind it. But I did this one a little bit different. So it opens up like this. And instead of sewing this flap onto it to make it a full envelope, I'm so sorry it's sliding everywhere. So instead of sewing this flap down, I've left it open so that she can open it up. And then instead, what I've done is I've sewn the side flaps here so that she can use them as tuck spots. So <clears throat> she can also write on the inside of this as well. So I've added this vintage notebook paper and uh, a quote from Prince that says, I think you'll always be able to do what your ear tells you. And then I've also thrown in one of these cards that Lori sent to me, this beautiful stamp that she has, Wish Upon a Star, it says. And so that just closes like this. And 
the paper clip helps to keep it down. So on this coffee dyed paper, I've just done a little collage of, <clears throat> excuse me, some washi tapes, uh, some stamping on book pages, and then this is a really cool piece of washi tape that I got from Priscilla. Got a little piece of embossing here, and then just some little fabric tabs and a bow. And on the opposite side, I've sewn some fabric to this flap and that opens up and there's a tag here that says the hunt some black rose vellum pretty markings here this is one of my favorite elements of this journal so this is <clears throat> excuse me you guys this is an envelope that is kept closed with this black seam binding and the, the envelope is made out of a piece of coffee dyed paper that I printed out some of the poetry on. And so I've added in some of these purple doilies that I dyed and layered on top some really cool crinkly tracing paper and I've sewn it all together so it opens up like so. I'm so, so sorry. My goodness. Be still. <laughs> So it opens up like this, and she can read part of this poem. And then I made a little tuck spot here with this embossed rose. And tucked inside is another little booklet of a poem <clears throat> by Charles Baudelaire. And the, the name of the poem is Dance Macabre. Sorry, I had to have a sip of drink. So... The name of this poem is Dance Macabre, and it is one of his most popular pieces. And so that just closes like so. And you tie the seam binding back, and then behind is a tuck spot with this tag that uh, I made from a stamp that Dolly sent to me. And the title, as you can see, is Dance Macabre, which it's probably based off of his poem. But uh, yeah, I just thought that was really cool and it was absolutely perfect for this page. So thank you again, Dolly, for everything that you sent to help. It's purple paper with a tab, some washi tape down at the bottom. This is a book page that I've sewn the edges. Here we have a full page tuck spot and this paper here came from um it was a book I found about a tattoo artist and so it had a bunch of images in it and this one says death or glory which I think was fitting so I've just layered it onto a book page and some cheesecloth and then it makes a full page pocket where I've tucked in the final uh file folder that I made and so I've just added a little charm on the on the, uh, the tab here, that's a star. It says, take the dead dry bones. And I've decoupaged this napkin here. And so when you open it up, she's got all the space to write, but I've uh, put in a couple of little skeleton guys. This one is Tim Holtz. This one I fussy cut from, I believe it was authentic paper. And so since the label said that, I just thought I'd throw in some little skeletons for her to use for something. And then on the back side, I've just added this little label that I've stamped out. This is brown packing paper with some washi tape and a tag that says ghastly. Another little owl brad on the back. This is the middle of the signature with another uh, vellum fold out. So I've layered some of this uh, shelf liner that I've had forever and I'm always wanting to use it and everything because it's so gorgeous. So I've layered some um, coffee dyed line paper on the back and I've added these little pieces of washi tape and this one I thought was cool because I had this string hanging. <laughs> so I added the little spider at the end of his little string. Again sewing pattern paper and tracing paper so she can write. And then on the back side is this tuck spot. I've just layered a doily, or well, it's part of a doily that I cut out. The doily I got from April. Thank you, April. So I dyed it purple, and then I've sandwiched it between some uh, vellum and tracing paper. Sewed around the edges, and it makes a little tuck here. And here's the other lavender 
shaker tag that I made. The other side of that brown packing paper with some silver leaf trim. Here's another collage with some owls. And just like the crow uh, further ahead in the book, I've added a little top hat to this guy. For, you know, he's a wise old owl, but he also likes to party. So <laughs> I embossed this stamp and cut it out and added it. And there's a gate or fence, excuse me, and a tree down at the bottom. There's his little buddy at the top. So here is like, um, this is like the homage to Prince page. And I've made these uh, little Sue Olsen tux, corner tuck spots. And it's more or less like a picture frame. And so I've added this really amazing picture of the handsome prince. And on the back is another of my favorite quotes by him that says, I wear heels because the women like them. <laughs> so I've just sewn around, done some corner punching, and I added this uh, crown paper clip with a little bead attached because he is the prince. And so that just tucks in there. Here is the other side of that book page with some dyed lace. Here is a banner tuck. And this is a piece of vellum that I've sewn on. So there's just a little skeleton guy and tucked inside is a book page. I found this really neat book at the Dollar Tree that I wanted to get because every chapter had a different phase of the moon and so I had to add that in there and the back is blank so she can use that to write on. And I've just glued on this stamp. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. And that's a graphic 45 stamp. Some trim sewn along the edge of the page. Here is a large pocket and I've just layered some sewing paper, sewing pattern paper, some lace, and then this really cool fabric from uh, that I got from Terry. Thank you, Terry. It's really neat. It's a spider web, and it's got like these purple spiders on it. And then we've got a, a spider web tab here with a pin attached with some fibers and beads. And tucked inside the pocket, I've just altered this tag. Really simple, just some stamping and sewing and gluing. It says, Wicked Dream. And on the back is the Prince lyric. And then I've also added in this... Uh, little doll that I fussy cut so she can glue him around the book or use him for something else. On the back, it's more of that really neat purple dyed paper and I've glued this piece of vellum that I stamped on. Some black rose vellum, some coffee dyed paper with some washi at the bottom. This washi right here I got from Priscilla and it is amazing. I, this is probably one of my most favorite washies I've ever seen. It's like a night scene with the moon rising. It's really cool. So please let me know where you got that from because I would love to get some. This is the other side of that doll page with lace scraps as a tab. And then I've just sewn an, uh, an envelope, a glassine envelope at the bottom. There's another Tim Holtz altered ticket. And then it makes a tuck spot where I've added vampire. On the opposite page, I've done some like layered pockets. So there's a vellum pocket here to hold this long tag that I made, little hand sewn tag. And then there's this flip up pocket with the bat paper. And then I've added in this really neat um, playing card that I got from Dolly in Texas. And as well, there's a little secret tuck spot on that side of it another tab with a scroll. This is a tip-in on this black cardstock with more of that spiderweb fabric and I've just layered some vintage laces and a little flower that I made along the top. It's an altered paper clip with this really gorgeous ceramic bead with purple flowers and this is the last little shaker tag with moons and stars inside. Nope. See if I can get it back on there. Here is another lace tab. And on this page, I've made a large pocket. So this is kind of funny. It's another little piece of Texas I've added in there for her. And 
I know I've said in a video before that I, when I'm out and about just doing normal things, grocery shopping, whatever, running errands, and I find something interesting, I will pick it up and keep it. It could be a lost earring, a keychain, a, a neat piece of paper, whatever. Anyway, so I found this somewhere I was at. I don't even remember because I've had it for a while. But it's really cool because it's got this, like, Texas <laughs> little lady. And this is a drawing of a doll that was made of this lady named Marie Gwinnon, I believe is how you pronounce it. But she was a singer, actress, and equestrian, a sharpshooter, a speakeasy hostess, a multimillionaire, a daredevil, born, born in Texas in 1884. So there's some information about her here, but um, I, I don't know. I guess this is like a little insert that comes with the doll or something, but I thought it was neat. And so I tucked that in there. And then this is a print of a painting of Hecate, and it is a flip down. So she can use that space to write a secret something. And so on the paper clip, I've just made a little, a little tag that is the information for this painting. Uh, done by William Blake, and I backed it with some of that uh, packing paper, and added a little, a little uh, piece of trim here. A little partial sheet with a lyric from Purple Rain or Shakespeare, and this is the very last page, you guys! Yay! So I've made, <laughs> I've made a side tuck here. I've layered some lace and some of this bling from. Kim, thank you Kim, and this really pretty velvet trim, and I've tucked inside this little last prints tag, and it says, time is a mind construct, it's not real, and that is a quote by him, and on the back I've added a sticker that says, a much misunderstood gentleman, and then I altered this little paper clip, and I've added a little electric guitar and this is another little tag that I was messing around with so I made these tiny tags uh, April sings it much better sorry anyway it's part of the scraps where I layered that um, all those pieces of the Edgar Allan Poe works onto that craft paper and so I've just taken some of the uh, embroidery floss that I had and I made a little flower or star or what have you so that tucks in there and this is the back of the uh, the inside of the back cover and I've just made this large side tuck with part of that really pretty scarf and tucked inside is another picture of Dracula and also another piece of the ledger that I got from April and it says underneath the purple rain which is the last lyric of the purple rain song so that is it folks that is all almost 40 minutes uh thank you so much again for hanging in there for stopping by for showing any <laughs> interest whatsoever in my work and my super long poorly edited or unedited videos you guys are amazing you rock just you need to know that so yeah anyway uh that's it that is all that is the rest of creatures of the night and so now i am working on some christmas minis getting some happy meal together and yeah until next time, you guys spread the love. Bye!